Okay, so I want to continue about uh, electrochemical equations and start off with this statement or the sentence right there that says, oops, oh, hold on, uh, that says, because there are no way to measure the absolute value of enthalpy of a substance, unless I measure an enthalpy change for every reaction of interest. Okay, what does that even mean, that question? Okay, let me go back a slide that you've already seen right here. In this thermochemical equation, it says one mole of glucose, C6H12O6, six moles of oxygen makes six moles of carbon dioxide, six moles of water, and it releases negative, remember exothermic, it releases 2,801 kilojoules of energy. So, uh, so that is a thermochemical equation. So fine, it releases 2,801 kilojoules of heat. What this statement says, do I actually have to um, measure amount of heat for every single equation in the world? How do I find delta H or reaction besides that? Right now here, it's given. But let's say this equation or this delta H was not given. Is there a way for us to figure out what delta H of, of some random reaction is, some given, uh, given balance equation? And it turns out, no, you don't have to determine delta H of every single reaction out there. Uh, there is a way to calculate it. But before we can actually calculate it, we need to know the definition of something. Uh, we made up some scale, some arbitrary scale, um, with something called the standard enthalpy or heat of formation. Remember, enthalpy heat, enthalpy heat, technically two different things like weight and mass, but for our purpose, we are going to say they're the same. Uh, the standard enthalpy or heat of formation as a reference points for all enthalpy or heat expressions. So we made up a scale called standard, standard enthalpy of formation. And we're going to use that in a way uh, you'll see in two slides from now. Okay, but what does that even mean? We came up with something called standard enthalpy of formation, and the symbol for it is delta HF, uh, with you know kind of like a like a degree symbol above it. Uh, so delta HF, standard enthalpy of formation, is a heat change that results when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements at one atmosphere. So how much energy? What is the energy change? In other words to make one mole of something from its elements. The definition of standard enthalpy of formation is to energy change whether it releases heat, exothermic or endothermic. Um, so the energy change if one, uh, to make one mole of that substance from its elements. And the enth of course, enthalpy of formation of any elements in its most stable form is zero. How much energy does it take to make one mole of an element from its elements? Well, nothing. So, uh, but one key thing is it says the most stable form. There's many different forms of an element. For instance, carbon, you could have carbon as uh, like a diamond is made out of pure carbon, or you can have a lump of coal, carbon, or graphite in a pencil, that's all pure carbon. So um, in its most stable form, okay? Uh, they're normally not numbers besides pure elements uh, that you would ever memorize, okay? Well, what's this, what is it for any pure element? It's most stable form, it's zero. So, heat of formation of oxygen, the most stable form of oxygen is as O2. Heat of formation of oxygen is zero. However, we're talking about ozone, O3, that's not the most stable form of oxygen. It does take 142 kilojoules of energy to make one mole ozone, O3, from oxygen. Uh, these numbers, again, you don't memorize, so it's going to be in a table in the next slide. For carbon, there's multiple forms of carbon. One is graphite, another one is diamond. For graphite, the most stable form of carbon, the heat of formation of carbon in the form of graphite is zero. But as diamond, it takes 1.09 kilojoules of energy to make one mole of diamond from uh, a mole of graphite. Okay, again, these are not numbers you memorize. They're found on a table in the textbook. Table 6-4. Standard enthalpy, also known as heat of formation of some inorganic substances. So notice all the zeros here, sort of all the zeros. What do you notice about all the zeros? As what it said on the previous slide, what do we know about zeros? 
they're an element in its most stable form. So what do we notice about all the zeros here, like silver, aluminum, bromine, carbon in the form of graphite, calcium, chlorine, copper. I'm not going to read them through them all, but what do we notice about them? They are elements in its most stable form. So based on that, you see O, O2, and O3. What is the most stable form of oxygen? Based knowing that uh, when it's zero, it's in its most stable form of that element. Well, obviously then O2 is the most stable form of oxygen. And knowing that again, sulfur says rhombic sulfur monoclinic. You never heard of rhombic monoclinic before, I assume, unless you so happen to be a mineralogist. But sulfur comes in uh, multiple forms, something called rhombic and monoclinic. And which is the most stable one? Well, that's going to be a question. Okay, so now, well, you know the zeros. What about the other things? Like carbon monoxide. How much energy does it take to make one mole of carbon monoxide from its elements? What are the elements? Carbon and oxygen. Well, it releases 110.5 kilojoules of heat. For carbon oxide, it releases 393.5 kilojoules of heat to make carbon oxide from its elements, carbon and oxygen. Okay, so standard enthalpy or heat formations, they're on this table. We don't memorize this stuff. We're going to use this in a second. Why? It turns out the standard heat of a reaction, how much energy there is in a reaction. Notice this Rxn here. Sometimes it's not written, but I'm going to go back, way back. Like here, it says delta H of this reaction. Okay, it's not read delta H of the reaction, but that's of this obviously given reaction. The delta H of a reaction, it turns, is the enthalpy of a reaction carried out at one atmosphere. It turns out that we've done a whole bunch of different reactions and we've seen a pattern. Given an equation, A and B make C and D, where the lowercase a, b, c are the coefficients of the balance equation. So A and B make C and D. Okay, it turns out delta H of any reaction, okay, let me move my face. Delta H of any reaction turns out to be this. Coefficient C times the heat of formation of C plus coefficient D times the heat of formation of D minus coefficient A times the heat of formation of A plus coefficient B times the heat of formation B. In other words, it is the sum of the heat of formation of all the products minus the sum of the heat of formation of all the reactants. Sum of the heat of formation of all the products minus sum of the heat of formation of all the reactants times its coefficients. Okay. In other words, if the products added up, C and D, C and D added up, minus the reactants, A and B added up, the co uh, time multiplied by their coefficients, the react products C and D minus the reactants A and B, the products C and D minus the reactants A and B. It is the co products times their coefficients, minus the sum of all the reactants. This little weird squiggly, uh, it looks like a weird E sign maybe to you. It's a Greek letter sigma, which is the sum of. Okay, You'll see that in Algebra 2 um, for, well, I think you see in Algebra 2. You, you're supposed to be in Algebra 2 right now. So maybe you've seen that. If not, well, you'll see it soon Okay, in Algebra 2. But it just means the sum of. Okay, uh, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to do that in another slide. So I'm going to skip that one for now. Okay, let's just look at a sample problem. And I'll give you the balance equation, though. Benzene, which is C6H6, burns in air, oxygen, to produce carbon dioxide and liquid water. This balance equation shows that. In fact, it says 2 moles of benzene and 15 moles of oxygen makes 12 moles of carbon dioxide and 6 moles of water. It's already balanced. You can check yourself, but it's already a balanced equation. The question, how much heat is released per mole of benzene, this thing, C6H6, uh, per mole of benzene combusted? The standard enthalpy of formation of benzene is 49.04 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so I know the enthalpy of formation of this thing. Well, I don't know delta H of this reaction. It's not given. How in the world am I supposed to figure out delta H of this reaction? Well, delta, because I know if it was, okay, let me go way back again. 
here. Okay, if I said how much energy is to make one mole of, uh, to combust one mole of glucose, C6H12O6, well, it's right there, the answer. 2801 kilojoules of heat. Okay, well, it gives off 2801, but we're not giving it in our equation. Oops, let me get back to the original question. There, so we're not given delta H of this reaction. We have to figure it out. Okay, so first thing we need to do is figure out delta H of the reaction. Well, delta H of a reaction is equal to the heat of formation of all the products, carbon dioxide and water, minus heat of formation of all the reactants, benzene and oxygen. It will be the heat of formation of carbon dioxide and water minus the heat of formation of benzene and oxygen. The products minus the reactants, the products, carbon dioxide, water, minus the reactant, reactants, benzene, and oxygen. Notice carbon dioxide and water minus benzene. I don't have the oxygen here. I didn't really need to write it down. Well, how do I find heat of formation of anything anyways? Well, first of all, benzene was given. It said it's 49.04. But how do I find a heat of formation of carbon dioxide and water? They're on the table. Let me go back to that table right there. Uh, what are we looking for? Carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide, here it is, negative 393.5. Uh, water, I think it was looking up, 285.8. .8. So we're going to use those numbers. So carbon dioxide, oh, I looked at the wrong, there, there's gaseous and liquid water. But um, So uh, carbon dioxide, 393.5. For water, negative 187.6. For benzene, it was given 49.04, 49.04. What about the oxygen? I can go back to the table, or table, but I don't really have to look it up. It's an element. Heat of formation of any element is zero, so I mean, I can have, I could have put it here, you know, plus 15 oxygen, but there's no need because it's going to be plus 15 zeros. Heat of formation of oxygen, any element is zero. So I have to look up Carbon dioxide, water, okay. Oh, forgot, coefficients 12, coefficient 6, where that come from? Or coefficient 12, coefficient 6. Coefficient 2, coefficient 2. Make sure they're multiplied by the coefficients. Plug that all in a calculator, I get negative 59, 46 kilojoules. So how much heat is re re uh, released from this reaction? 59, 46 kilojoules. Uh, not totally done. Technically, the question is how much heat is released per mole of benzene. What we calculated is for every two moles of benzene. You see the coefficient two there? This 5946 kilojoules is for two moles of benzene. The question is how much energy is released for one mole of benzene. Okay, well, that's not hard. I know that's amount of energy for two moles of benzene, so divide by two. Or in other words, it's negative 2973 kilojoules of heat. So how much heat is released per mole of benzene combusted according to that reaction? 2973 kilojoules of heat. So one of the main things that we learned is how to calculate delta H of a reaction. Notice here it's not given to us in this equation. We can calculate it using heat of formation. Heat of formation not numbers you memorize. They're on a table. But to find delta H of the reaction, it will be the sum of the heat of formation of all the products minus the sum of formation heat, sum of the heat of formation of all the reactants multiplied by their coefficients. So 12 times carbon dioxide plus 6 times water minus 2 times benzene minus 15 times oxygen. But I didn't really need that because oxygen is just zero. Look up all the numbers on the table, plug in a calculator, and that is delta H of a reaction. So given any balanced equation, well, even if it weren't balanced, you know how to balance an equation, given any balanced equation, you can calculate the delta H of any reaction. Okay, so that is what we have for today. We're going to do some other uh, uh, videos or ed puzzles on uh, heat of formation.